Hi folks, I am Becky with Enduring Finances. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are looking back on the month of December and all of the individual dividends that I earned in my personal stock portfolio through Ally as a brokerage account. And just a little bit of context there, I am a single 30 year old female who has a part time job and some side hustles and lots of big goals and aspirations and uh, I'm not investing anything currently into this portfolio other than the dividends that I am earning. So I'm just reinvesting and we're just going in a circle like this and slowly building um, and that's where we're at right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at my personal investment strategy that I am using and remember I'm doing a long-term dividend growth approach to this. So we're talking like years down the road, I plan on using this as a source of passive income for myself, but not anywhere in the next 10 to 20 years. So that's the context of where my investment strategy is at. So let's take a look at it briefly. So we can see my biggest sector that I focus on is finance right here with a 25% target goal and then tech, real estate, and consumer staples all have 15% target goals, and uh, utilities comes in at 10%, and the rest of them, healthcare, energy, telecommunication, bonds, and ETFs, all of them just kind of wither down far, wither down the farther we go down that list. But that is how I allocate my investing strategy, and I track it in a separate spreadsheet where I base where I'm reinvesting my dividends off of how I'm doing with my target numbers. So we can see that probably this next little bit I'm going to be focusing on tech and bringing that up a little bit and then as well as that bonds and then we'll get into the finance and real estate as well. And this just fluctuates with the market value and how many different shares of stock I own in each one of those sectors. So it's it's constantly fluctuating and it's just a, a moving target that I'm always trying to follow and I'll probably never hit it dead on and that is okay. We are just imperfectly doing this as perfectly as we can. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is my current breakdown right now and how much I can expect to see in a dividend yield for 12 months. So that is my strategy right there. Let's go ahead and see how my portfolio did for the month of December of 2022. So overall, it was a rough year for the stock market. A lot of lows, some highs, but mainly it was just a tough, it was just a tough market. Uh, we ended the year with a balance of $28,912.45. Uh, we started out the year with my portfolio being balanced at $30,940.34. So we saw a total loss of about $2,000 or about 4.6%. Um, in December, we lost just about $1,300 and about 4.4%. So we were doing all right right until the end. So we were just up and down and up and down and you can see that as my portfolio just bounces throughout the year. But that's okay. Remember we are doing a long-term approach to that. Um, we can see how my portfolio has increased over time and where it's at and where it kind of started. So you know we've come a long ways from 2023 from 2013 where we didn't have any money into it to essentially where it is right now and a lot of that was because I was dumping money into it when I could and now we're just riding the waves and we're just gonna be going with that. So let's take a look and see how my dividends did for the month of December. Um, we can see we were expecting a higher month there just following the traditional trend. We made $98.91 in the month of December, bringing our total dividend earnings for 2022 to $1,120.50. And this is essentially just passive residual income from money that I have invested. Uh, very happy with that return. As far as my quarterly dividends, we are seeing that trend continue to increase. And I like to look at the quarterly dividends um, as more of like a, a true pattern rather than monthly, just because most companies don't pay out their dividends every month. They pay it out quarterly. Some of them do monthly, some of them do biannually, some of them do annually. But most of them are traditionally paying dividends once a quarter. So they're not all the same month or the same date. So this gives a truer picture. The quarterly dividends give a truer picture of how my dividends are doing long term with increases. And we started tracking this from 2021 here. And so we can see there is a there is an increase. We dipped down a little bit 
Um, the last little bit is kind of tapered off a little bit, but the market hasn't been the greatest. But we did see an increase again um, <clears throat> with this quarter, $289.35, and it was the highest quarter that we've had this year of 2022. So I'm happy with that. So before I jump into my individual dividends, let's go ahead and take a look real quick at how I reinvested the money, the dividends that I earned in December back into my portfolio. So this is dividends from November, December in the middle of the month that I reinvested. So let's take a look at that real quick. The first company that I purchased money, that I purchased stock from again, is ticker for example BK. And I purchased one share of stock for them for $44. And then the second company that I reinvested money into, and this is in the finance sector, was ticker symbol Key, Key K-E-Y. I bought two shares of this stock for $16.96 a piece. And that is, again, just to rebalance that strategy in my portfolio to, to keep me along my goals for retain, returning for dividend returns over time. Uh, so pretty straightforward with that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the individual dividends that I earned. So the first dividend that I earned on the dis on December 1st is ticker symbol CMI, which is Cummins. I have one share of their stock. We made $1.57 off of their dividend. And right now we're up about 13.5% in this position overall. My second dividend coming in again on the 1st of December is ticker symbol ENB, which is Enbridge Incorporated. For $2.17, I own four shares of this stock, and we are up just under 19% in this position. And this is a Canadian company, so we are seeing that 15% tax coming out, courtesy of my brokerage account taking care of that, so thank you, Ally. Uh, the next dividend coming in again on the 1st of December is ticker symbol PSX, which is Phillips 66. For $2.91, I own three shares of this stock, and this position is up over 66%. Um, very good in that. We're like, we've made about $124 of a market increase over time for how long we've held the position. And this company does take about 1.1% of my entire portfolio in the mix of that. So I'm happy with that return. Um, the last dividend that I earned on the 1st of December is ticker symbol V, which is Visa Incorporated, for $1.35. I own three shares of well of this stock, and we are up about 2% in this position. And Visa did go ahead and increase their dividend from 0.375 cents a share to 45 cents a share. So a pretty decent jump with that. Less than 10 cents, but it is an increase, and I will accept any increase that we get. Um, the next dividend coming in on the 5th of December is ticker symbol LYB for $1.19 for the one share that we own, and we are up about 20% in this position overall. Uh, the second dividend coming in on the 5th of December is ticker symbol PFE, which is Pfizer. You've probably heard of them, shots and vaccines and all that. Um, we made $1.60 off the four shares that we own, and we are up about 47.6% in this position overall. So it is doing very well with how the economy is going in the market and health and all of that. Um, the next dividend coming in on the 6th of December is ticker symbol BNDX, which is that Vanguard Total International ETF Total International Bond ETF fund that I am invested in. We made 12 cents off of two shares for that. And it is down about 9.6%. So it's it's not doing too hot, but that's okay. The next dividend coming in again on the 6th of December is ticker symbol JNJ, which is Johnson & Johnson. For $1.13, we have seven shares of this stock. And it is also down about 2.2%, right around $22 in the whole. And it makes it about 3.25% of my entire portfolio. The last dividend coming in on the 6th of December is ticker symbol SO, which is a favorite company of mine, which is Southern Company. We made $10.20 off of the 15 shares that we still hold. And this company is up about 17.6% overall and makes up a large portion of my portfolio coming in at 3.7%. So it's a big boy in my portfolio happy with how this company is doing and look to hold on to them for the long term. The next dividend coming out on the 8th of December is ticker symbol AMGN for $1.94. We have one share of stock with them and we are up about 7.4% in this position overall. 
The next dividend coming in again on the 8th of December is ticker symbol CNP, which is Center Point in your Energy Incorporated. For $5.22, we have 29 shares of the stock, and we are up over $250 in this position, or about 41.2%. So we're doing all right with that position. The last dividend coming in on the 8th of December is ticker symbol MSFT, which is Microsoft. For $0.68, cents, we have one share of this stock, and they're doing all right market-wise, but they did go ahead and increase their dividend from 62 cents a share to 68 cents a share. So six cents increase, we're very happy with that. We'll keep holding on to Microsoft. I think they're doing all right. They're going places. <laughs> um, the next dividend coming in on the 12th of December is ticker symbol CVX, which is Chevron Corporation. For $1.42, we have one share of the stock. And this company is doing fantastic right now. They're up from when I bought them almost 98.5%. So they are almost double the amount of money that I purchased them at. So we're doing great with them. Happy to hold on to them. Love seeing super high numbers as far as market value increase over time because it makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing holding on to this company. The next dividend coming in on the 13th of December is ticker symbol UNH, which is United Health Group. For $4.95, we have three shares of the stock, and we are up over 63% in this position. And this is another big company in my portfolio coming in at 5.5% overall. Most of the companies that I own are coming in right around 1% or less. So this is a big one in my portfolio. The next dividend coming in on the 15th of December is ticker symbol HD, which is Home Depot, for $1.90. We own one share of this stock, and we are up about exactly $30 in this position, or about 10.5%, so happy to see that. Next dividend that we saw on the 15th of December is ticker symbol KEY, which is K-E-Y, which we reinvested money into this month as well. Um, we earned 21 cents off the three shares that we held at the time, and they went ahead and increased their dividend again from 19.5 cents to 20.5 cents, so a one cent increase for a smaller dividend is, you know, that's a good increase, right? Percentage-wise, that's a good increase. The next dividend coming in on the 15th of December is ticker symbol KO, which is Coca-Cola. For $6.60, we own 15 shares of this stock, and we are up about 28.5% in this position. The next dividend coming in again on the 15th of December is ticker symbol NEE. For $2.98, we own 7 shares of this stock, and we are up about 11.3% in this position. The next dividend coming in again on the 15th of December is ticker symbol O, which is Realty Income Corporation. For $1.24, we have five shares of this stock, and we are down about 6.4%, we're about $22 in this position. The last dividend earned on the 15th of December is ticker symbol STAG, which is Stag Industrial Incorporated. For $0.37, cents, we have three shares of this stock, and we are down about 11.1% in this position overall. The next dividend coming in on the 16th of December is ticker symbol DUK, which is Duke Energy Corporation, for $2.01. We have two shares of the stock, and we're doing all right with an 18.6% return on this market value increase. So the company is doing all right right now in a bad market. Makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, the next dividend coming in again on the 16th of December is ticker symbol FLO, which is Flowers Food Incorporated, for $1.10. We have five shares of this stock, and we are also up about 17.3% in this position, and it's doing all right. The next dividend coming in on the 20th of December is ticker symbol D, which is Dominion Energy, for $1.34. We have two shares of this stock, and we are down about 18.3% in this position. The next dividend coming in on the 23rd of December is ticker symbol SU, which is Suncor Energy Incorporated, for $4.88. And we own 15 shares of this stock, and this company is up over 104% in this position. So I have essentially doubled the amount of money that I invested originally in this company. Um, happy to see that. My No, this company is a Canadian company, so we see that 15% tax come out, but this company is doing fantastic, and I'm happy to have them in my portfolio. Uh, the next event coming in on the 27th of December is ticker symbol EFC 
for $8.25. We own 55 shares in this company and it is down about 31.7%. So it is not doing too hot, but we're still holding strong with this company. They have a very steady dividend return. The next dividend I earned on the 29th of December was a second dividend for this company. And by that, I mean ticker symbol BNDX, which is the Vanguard Total International Bond Index Fund for 43 cents for those two shares that I own. We see this pretty typically where they have a bigger payout at the end of the year, historically, if you see their dividend data. So, but yeah, uh, the next dividend that I earned on the 29th of December is ticker symbol TROW. For $3.60, I own three shares of this stock and we are down over 20% in this position. So it is one of the lowest market value ones that I have right now as far as loss. Uh, the next event coming in on the 30th December is ticker symbol AVGO. For $9.20, I own two shares of this stock and we are up over 36.4%, almost $300 up as far as market value. And this company does make up about 3.8% of my entire portfolio, so it is a bigger one in my bag. And they went ahead and did increase their dividends from $4.10 a share to $4.60 a share. So a 50 cent increase, which is huge, and I will take it. The next dividend coming in on the 30th of December is ticker symbol BAC, which is Bank of America, for $6.82. I have 31 shares of the stock. Um, and we are up about 2.3% in this position. The next dividend coming in on the 30th of December is ticker symbol CCI for $1.57. We have one share of the stock and we are down about 18.9% in this position. But even with being down in their market value, they did increase their dividend from $1.47 a share to $1.56 a share. So I'm happy to see those dividends increases even though their market value is below what I originally invested in them. Uh, the next dividend coming in again on the 30th of December is ticker symbol KHC, which is Kraft Heinz Company. For $3.20, we own sh eight shares of their stock and we are up about 20.1% in this position overall. The next dividend coming in again on the 30th of December is ticker symbol LMT. For $3 even, we own one share of the stock and we are up almost $95 in this position. And this company did go ahead and increase their dividend by 20 cents from $2.80 a share to $3 a share. So happy to see that. The next dividend coming in again on the 30th of December is ticker symbol LTC for $1.90. We still hold on to those 10 shares that we have. They have had a monthly dividend and this company is down about 5% in market value overall. And then the last dividend that we earned again on the 30th of December is ticker symbol TRV, which is the Travelers Companies. For $1.86, we have two shares of this stock and we are up in market value about $95 or about 33.5% in this position. <clears throat> so that wraps up all the individual dividends that I earned. Let's go ahead and see my favorite part of this whole little breakdown is what I call the stats, the statistics of how I'm doing. <clears throat> as far as December goes, we saw our dividend yield increase from 3.78% to 3.96%. We saw that average dividend increase about $2 for the year. And that's how much I'm going to make in a rolling 12-month period that continues to increase over time. We saw the average monthly dividend turn to $95.56. Per week, that breaks down to $22.05. Per day, this is how much money I'm just making passively off of dividends on average is $3.14 again. And we can see that increase down below. Per hour broken down, that's 13 and one tenth cents. And then per minute, we're still stuck at that 0 0.002 cents per hour. But if we were to compare this to the average 40 hour work week, we would be making 55 and one tenth cent per hour off of just passive dividend income and very happy to see that increase over time just to make sure that we're making those small increases and we're on the right track to reach our goals. And speaking of goals, let's go ahead and take a look at those real quick. Change this up a little bit, reorganized. Hope it works. If not, let me know. Um, so we can see like the goal for 2022 that I had was to reach a portfolio of $32,500. We did not, the market did not let us reach that. We're at that $2,900. 
and wanted to earn $1,200 in dividends for the year. In total, we made $1,121.50, so about $900 shy of that. And then I wanted to reach a $100 monthly average dividend, and we are about $4.5 shy of that. And then uh, we, we ended on $3.14 average per day. So a little shy of what we wanted as far as breakdown here. Um, we will definitely, definitely hit that $100 average, I think, next year. And that $3.29 a day. I think it was a good year overall. We definitely saw an increase in our dividends. And even though our portfolio went down a little bit, we're still on the right track. We can see that with the statistics and how overall my dividends are increasing and my dividend yield is just tinkering right below that 4%. So we are, we are reinvesting and rebalancing exactly how I want to be. And I just got to keep working with it. So I think that is going to wrap it up for today, you guys. I do plan on making a video that breaks down where my current portfolio is at an in-depth breakdown, I should say, of where each one sector is and how much, how many positions and all of that in a separate video for all of 2022, just showing where it's at going into 2023, because I think some people would find that interesting and would like to, you know, look at it as a whole rather than broken down by monthly. So expect to see that the end of this week. And uh, I hope we all have some good goals for 2023 and we can knock them out of the park. Bye, folks.